Today we are going to talk about regulation of fluid exchange and osmotic equilibrium between intracellular and extracellular fluid. The fluid which is present in the human body in the intracellular compartment and the extracellular compartments how that fluid is regulated how the exchange between that fluid is regulated and how the osmotic equilibrium is maintained between the intracellular and the extracellular fluid we discussed that in the human body there is around 42 liters of fluid 14 liter is in the extracellular fluid and around 28 liters intracellular fluid the extracellular fluid is basically present in the plasma and the interstitial fluid while the intracellular fluid is present inside the cells so that is something which we have discussed we also know that we also know that the heart is basically pumping the blood blood has uh, red blood cells as well as plasma that blood is basically carried with the help of arteries arterioles capillaries to the tissue and there the nutrients and the fluids uh, are basically uh, provided to the different cells the cells they consume the different nutrients and then the deoxygenated blood it basically returns to the heart now while doing so how the body is basically trying to regulate the fluid exchange how the body is basically regulating the fluid exchange and how it is maintaining the osmotic equilibrium between the intracellular and extracellular fluid because the the fluid the, the, the total fluid has to be maintained at 42 liters the extracellular fluid has to be 40, 14 liters and the intracellular has to be 28 liters while the fluid is coming all the way from the heart it is being filtered here all the fluid is coming into the interstitial fluid and then the exchange is occurring between the fluid and the cells and then the remaining fluid is going again into the heart but their amount is being maintained the amount is being maintained now what are basically the forces which are responsible for this fluid exchange and how basically they are regulating how they are regulating this and how in osmotic equilibrium is being maintained between these different compartments between the extracellular fluid compartment and the intracellular fluid compartment now we are basically uh, studying the uh, renal system the kidneys and the body fluids so that's why we are discussing all these things in detail so that in the future lectures oh, it is very easy to understand that the, that the body must maintain proper amount of fluid and electrolytes so that's why we are basically emphasizing on these things now there are four main factors there are more four main factors or four forces which are basically playing their role at the level of extracellular fluid and interstitial uh, the, the the plasma and the interstitial fluid now the forces which are basically present in the plasma they are they are the capillary hydrostatic pressure capillary hydrostatic pressure this pressure is present due to uh, due to the movement of the fluid ions or the fluid molecules in the plasma or in the blood and this pressure basically it is forcing the fluid out of the capillaries into the interstitial fluid the capillary hydrostatic pressure then there is another pressure known as capillary capillary colloid osmotic pressure or also known as oncotic pressure also known as oncotic pressure this pressure is due to proteins this pressure is basically due to proteins and this pressure is due to proteins present in the plasma in this level this the plasma is here basically blood is coming through the arteries into the arterioles to the level of capillaries so plasma is present at this level the fluid in the plasma is basically applying the capillary hydrostatic pressure which is forcing the fluid out the capillary or colloid osmotic pressure or the capillary oncotic pressure is basically due to the proteins and it is basically forcing the fluid inside the capillaries this pressure is forcing the fluid outside and this pressure is basically forcing the fluid inside the capillary from the interstitial it is basically pulling the fluid into the capillaries and it is basically due to the proteins now in the interstitial fluid there is interstitial hydrostatic pressure interstitial fluid hydro hydrostatic pressure it is present due to the mo movement of the molecules of the fluid and this pressure is basically pushing the fluid towards the capillary it is basically pushing the fluid or the molecules inside the capillary just like the colloid osmotic pressure or the pressure due to the proteins present in the plasma is trying to bring the uh, uh, molecules inside the uh, plasma inside the capillaries similarly the in, um, interstitial hydrostatic interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure or the pressure in the inter interstitium due to the movement of water molecule or fluid molecules is basically trying to push the molecules inside the capillary another pressure basically in the in um, in the uh, interstitial fluid is the interstitial fluid 
interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure is present in the interstitium it is basically trying to pull the fluid into the interstitium it is basically trying to pull the molecules of water or fluid into the interstitium so basically we have four forces the first two forces are basically in the plasma and two forces are in the interstitium and there is a balance between these four forces there is a balance between these four forces and these forces basically regulate the amount of fluid they basically regulate and maintain the amount of fluid in the plasma and in the interstitial fluid so they are responsible for the regulation of fluid exchange between the intracellular and uh, between the uh, plasma and the interstitial fluid they are not active at the level of intracellular now what happens in the intracellular compartment so uh, i should summarize summarize it there are basically four forces the capillary hydrostatic pressure the capillary oncotic pressure the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure and the interstitial fluid oncotic or capillary uh, os um, osmotic uh, pressure colloid osmotic pressure basically so the colloid osmotic pressure is also known as the oncotic pressure and it is due to the proteins so the colloid pressure is due to proteins in the interstitium and the proteins in the plasma the colloid pressure due to proteins in the plasma is basically trying to pull the fluids into the capillaries while the colloid pressure due to proteins in the interstitium is basically trying to pull the fluid into the interstitium they are basically uh, playing the opposite they are basically applying opposite pressure one is trying to push the fluid into the capillary into the plasma the other is trying to push pull the fluid into the interstitium similarly the hydrostatic pressure in the plasma is trying to force the molecules into the interstitium while the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid is basically trying to force the uh, molecules into the capillaries now at the level of cells in the cells exchanges also occurring between the intracellular and this interstitium the intracellular and the extracellular fluid as well if we uh, look at these these four pressures if we look at these four pressures uh, we will uh, come to know that they are basically forces between the plasma and the interstitial fluid or all these forces are basically trying uh, to act with, at the level of extracellular fluid all these forces were basically acting at the level of extra cellular fluid at the level of intracellular fluid and the interstitium the movement of fluid is due to the osmotic pressure due to the osmotic pressure or due to the uh, movement of the molecules due to the movement of the molecules the osmotic effect basically the osmotic effect of the molecules in the cells inside the cells and in the interstitial fluid now depending upon the molecules of sodium chloride potassium etc in the interstitium and sodium chloride and potassium in the cells depending upon the amount of these electrolytes depending upon the the amount of these electrolytes in the interstitium and the amount of these electrolytes in the in, in the inside the cells these number of electrolytes basically determine the movement of fluid if the electrolytes amount is more in the cells if the number of electrolytes is high inside the cells fluid from the interstitium will basically move inside the cell if the amount or the number of electrolytes is higher in the interstitium fluid from the cells will basically move from the cells into the interstitium so the balance the regulation of fluid exchange at the level of extracellular fluid was with the help of four basically four basic forces the hydrostatic and the uh, colloid osmotic pressures but at the level of intracellular at the level of intracellular fluid the regulation of fluid exchange the regulation of fluid exchange in osmotic equilibrium is due to the osmotic effect it is due to the osmotic effect of the molecules or the uh, osmotic effect of the ions the different ions so depending upon the concentration depending upon the number depending upon the amount of these ions inside the interstitial fluid and inside the cells it will determine the the fluid the movement of fluid fluid will move toward higher ions fluid will move towards higher concentration of ions so if the concentration of ions is higher in the interstitial fluid fluid will from the cells will move towards the interstitium if the concentration of these ions is high inside the cell then fluid from the interstitial will will move inside the cell now it is the it is the uh, function of the kidneys it is the function of the kidneys to maintain a proper amount of fluid inside the body which is normally 42 liters and then it is also important to maintain the 14 liters in the extracellular fluid and the 28 liters intracellular fluid now kidneys 
are very much involved in the fluid exchange and we are going to discuss it in detail in the coming lectures but this exchange at the cellular level this exchange at the cellular level and this maintenance of fixed amount of fluid in the interstitium and the fixed amount of fluid in the plasma and the fixed amount of fluid inside the cells is basically maintained with the help of these forces which we have discussed in detail so that is how basically the regulation of fluid exchange and the osmotic equilibrium is maintained between the intracellular and the extracellular fluid in the extracellular fluid the hydrostatic and the colloid osmotic pressure is very much active at the intracellular level and the interstitium basically the osmotic effect of the different ions or electrolytes is very much important and due to their concentration difference the fluid is regulated so when fluid keeps on moving and the electrolytes the amount the number of electrolytes are maintained the fluid uh, level is maintained then the body uh, the optimum conditions are maintain maintained then the body will function properly if there is any abnormality in these uh, maintenance uh, uh, these forces or if there is any difference there is increase or decrease in the amount of fluid if there is any increase or decrease in the number of electrolytes then these forces will get disturbed and this regulation and this osmotic equilibrium will get disturbed and the body will not be able to perform under the optimum conditions that's all about the regulation of fluid exchange thanks a lot for watching the video